Welcome to the design process workflow videos. And in the last two videos, we have looked at how to draw a low fidelity wireframe as well as generating two mode boards. In this video, I'll show you how to use the low fidelity wireframe and the mode board that we generated to make into a high fidelity wireframe, which consists of the pictures and the correct type setting, which we have in the mode board, and then as well as the color scheme. High fidelity wireframe will be very close to the final design of how a website or app is supposed to be, except that it's probably not at the pixel perfect level. Let's start. Very first thing, I want to copy the color palette, the logo, the heading fonts, and as well as the reading fonts so that I can simply pick the fonts styling over. So let's do a control C to copy this, or you can simply go to menu, edit, and copy. And then go to this wireframe file. I've already duplicated the file and I rename it as Hi-Fi wireframe, stand for high fidelity wireframe. So I want to paste it somewhere outside my this wireframe. I will want to replace the logo as my this logo. So I simply delete where the logo is and then have my logo placed over. And it will not fit because when I did the low fidelity wireframe, it is not really accurate. Low fidelity wireframe is more of the placement of how your website is supposed to be. It will be at the actual design stage where you will still do some adjustment, especially on the pixel. So I'm just simply going to increase the size on top so that my logo will fit in. There we go, roughly there. Maybe it's too small. Let me increase it a little bit. That will do. And I want to have this set in this crimson text font and it's, it's supposed to be semi bold okay and they will be align center okay as for the colors i will want it to be set in this sage green color and let's go ahead and set all the heading first to be that starting so it will be in crimson text for headings but it's in the correct point size which is 60 point and and it should be this should be bold and the heading font, let me ungroup this and I'm, I want to ungroup all of this and I'm going to select all the subheading and then have it color pick this starting but the size should be 48 and the reading font should follow this which is this but maybe not at this size maybe a 20, 24 point, 28 I guess okay and my read more I will simply just make one and then I will duplicate it. So it should be in this size. No, it should be in that styling. Ungroup this. It should be white. Yeah, it looks good for now. So we will have this duplicate over. And duplicate another one. Okay, this should follow the sub heading as well. So I simply just ungroup them, ungroup this, and ungroup this. So follow this style, so ungroup. Hey, uh, why not I'll just delete this tool. Let me lock this by pressing um, Command 2 on, on Mac. Alright, delete one so that I can get this style. Take this, use this and pick this. Yep. And this should be one of the lighter color. And I have it here. Okay, and then let's leave that for now. And then this should be this styling as well. Line center. And I want it set to this color. And this should be, should follow this. And it's probably at 21. Yeah, I'm happy with my type setting now. So let's go ahead and fill in um, pictures. Pictures are already downloaded a bunch of stuff which I already use it for my mood board. But when you want to use picture, please make sure that they are royalty free or copyright free. If it's not royalty free pictures, if it's copyrighted, then please pay for them if you need to use them for your commercial use. So the pictures that I selected here were all from this um, free uh, stock images website, pixel.com. 
So go there and grab some images and make sure that you give attribution to the photographers. It's actually quite, it's a tough job to actually um, shoot all these photos. I want to drop some pictures in here. The box with cross is actually meant to represent pictures, images in uh, low fidelity wireframe. But to, to drop the picture into this, we want to do away the cross. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select the cross and delete them. So make sure that I don't touch the box. I'll lock the box, but I want to delete the cross. Lock the box, I lock the box, and I want to delete the cross. Here, same for here. All right, so I lock this. Let me unlock it. Okay, and this should be social media um, icons. So I'll replace them with social media icon afterwards. Footer, maybe I want to drop um, this color instead. And the tag should be in reverse white. All right, now almost ready. Let's drop the some pictures in. Casa Blanca. Let me just bring the picture uh, folder over so that we can all see it. Okay, I'll use part of this picture as the top. So I'm simply going to drop it here. The original size of the picture is actually very big. So let me size it down by using the size down tool, which is scale tool. Click on this and I scale it to 10% 10, 10 first before I actually drag it so that to fill it. Make sure that you hold on to shift key. Now, don't, don't squash pictures like that. This is very unprofessional, especially if you are going to be a graphic designer. Graphic designer don't do such thing. Please don't squash images out of proportion. Yeah, Have some pride in our profession. You can hold on to shift and then drag and open this. Roughly fill the horizontal part and then I want to put it to the back of the order arrangement send to back and I want to show part of the pools and not so much of the um, maybe it's part of the ladies yep masking is actually a very important thing and it's very commonly used in all um, graphic design software um, since the freehand time. We we'll do a lot of masking in Photoshop, in Illustrator as well. So what it does is actually to mask this whole picture into this box. So what I'll do is select both two objects, make sure that the mask is actually on top layer of your pictures or whatever elements that you want to mask it. Then simply right click and then make clipping mask. It will actually mask it inside. I might want to change the design here a little bit because it seems to be too narrow. So let me just increase the mask and then put it like that. So that my, my slider is actually um, covers the whole thing with the logo on top. Maybe I want it to be slightly bigger. So let me si simply increase it further. At this stage is still wireframe time. You can still change the size. So let me shift the Casablanca to the top a bit. Let me move this to the bottom so that our navigation comes up. All right. So now in order for me to read the text, there are some tricks to do it. So let me show you one trick. One is actually to have the top part um, semi-translucent. So what I do is, let me send this both to the back. Send to the back and have this in multiply. So it's like a translucent effect that um, in between the, the foreground and the background so that we can see um, it's the extension of the pictures. We can see the picture gracefully go into the back, but we can still make our things on top readable. So right now I have to adjust this color. Yeah, looks good. Let me group all this together so that it's easier. Um, how about let's make it gradient instead. All right, gradient is here. Let me drag this in. Add one black. Let's set both at gradient first. It will gradually go from 
um, transparent translucent all the way to full colors. So and in this direction, so I'll change it to this direction. Yeah, that should do. And bring it down a little more. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Now the top is done. Let's have it set in our theme color so that it looks nice. And this should be in I like that color. And our carousel arrow will be also set to maybe this color. With five. Shift this up. All right, the top part is done. Let's fill in pictures for this and you will see that it will be really very close to how the final um, design will look like. Let's drop pictures in for the first one, assuming that, let's drop some flowers in for the first one. Maybe, yeah, maybe, no, that's too much. Yeah, this one looks good. Or maybe this, yeah, this looks good. Okay, one picture in. Okay, 10% is gonna go there. And let's drop a feature. We already have pool, we don't want any more pool. Oh, let's drop this, this is good. Okay, again 10% first. Make sure that when you choose pictures, it comes from the same styling and same thing. Yeah? So that will actually bring out the style. Um, I don't know, this is not Casablanca, this is Venice. This is Venice in Italy, you can see the tower there for San Marco. Uh, this looks good. Yeah, hotel should have spa, so yeah, why not? All right, 10%. Okay, let's mask them all in into this box. Part of this to show maybe the bottom part. Drop this to the back and select both item and mask it. Now it doesn't work. The angle. Yeah, that will do. Okay, and the next one. Drop to the back and make clipping mask. Adjust the thing that will do. Let's have the girl at the center. So we should actually increase this a little bit more. Yeah, visually balanced. All right, the last one. Hold, hold shift when you drag so that it is proportionate. Send to the back. And I want the candle to show. So I both item and make clipping mask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should do. All right, do some adjustment. If you need to increase the size or bring this down a little, yeah, it's a bit too narrow for pictures. So maybe you should increase the size for all this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that looks more balanced. Okay, let's leave it for now. All right, there's a big image to drop at the back for this, the next session. And it's so far, it's quite sepia. Let's drop something green in. Let's see, no, that's too strong. It's too strong as well. This, this two image shouldn't be here because um, it shouldn't be the same set. Same for this, it shouldn't be here. Uh, yeah, this might work. All right, let's try this. Back to the back and make clipping mask. Maybe it's too strong because the top image is actually too colorful for our Casablanca team. So as you can see, the moon board, is, what is lacking probably is the this blue and then this, this color, earth color. So I want to force it back to that, that theme. Um, let me undo this. And now this picture, we'll use it for one of these, one of the feature inside. So I'll put it aside and let's drop in a earth tone picture instead. We have this, it's the same image. Let's use this. Size down to 10% first. Size it up. Okay, move to the back. Since it's a background picture, we don't want it to be too um, prominent. So I don't want it to be too focused. So I want to use the top part, which is slightly out of focus. But I just want that color and the and the dimension that it gives. So that should work. Make clipping mask. Yeah, that will do. Okay, that's good. Now let's lock this so that we can duplicate this part. We'll duplicate this to the center of the page. 
and duplicate another one. The three items should be proportionate. Um, we can use one of these, but let's see what features we have. I think we missed out the door, which is this color theme. This color theme. This will work. Okay, let's use one of these as the one. Too strong. Mm, this doesn't look like a contra. Yeah, maybe this. Okay. Okay, let's see, does it work with these pictures? Mm, too strong. Okay, let's do away with this. Put it as. Yeah, why not? This looks good. Okay, we will use part of this. All right, with this, make clipping mask. When you make clipping mask, you automatically put it in the foreground. Mm, okay, in this way, as you can see, that it might work, it might not work. Huh? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm, I want to make it work. So I might just turn this into the whole thing as a background. Okay. I'll just increase this. All right, and have it sent to the back. Okay, and let's make this into all right darker, and let's do it this way instead. Mm -hmm. We can use a darker color for the button. No, I think this will work. And we'll use the lighter color as a text. Yeah. Oh, there's a spelling error here. Add to cut should be add to cut, not add to cut. Okay, let's move this aside, move this aside, and let's remove this too. Okay, we'll simply duplicate this and then replace the pictures. I use this, I cut it, and I go inside here, and then double click to go inside and replace this, delete this, and then paste my picture in. Drag and hold, uh, hold shift so that it's proportional. Let's stop the outside. Okay. You know, I should copy first, double click this, and delete the picture and paste the new one in. This is a background. The window is nice. So yeah, maybe just like that. Yep. And let's have this darker. Unlock this. And let's pick this from the top. So that is the same style. And have this come from the top. No, come from the bottom. Okay. Yeah, looks good. Maybe you can drop some shadow here. Let's lock this first so that we don't select this. Effect, stylize, drop shadow. Yep, now it's correct. Not so strong, 30%. Y is, X is 0. Y is 15 and blur is 30. Yeah, too strong, 25. Um, the trick with drop shadow, if you want to do a classy feel, is that you don't want it to be too obvious. So as designers, we always we won't use it as like this. You will never see a designer that do it this way, a real designer that do it this way. Uh, it cheapen the whole look. So what we want to do is we want to have it there, but it's there, but it's not there. It doesn't really feel like a harsh drop shadow. It's very tinted. Maybe even I'll even drop it to twenty percent, but it bring out the contrast from the um your background so you feel that it's actually floating on top that is what we want to achieve so let's okay with this okay we can actually do the drop shadow for these buttons as well since it's sitting on top of this effect 
apply drop shadow as well which will take the drop shadow from our previous setting as you can see it's very tinted you can barely see it there but it's actually there and that's what you want drop shadow for all right almost there since we already set all the styling so i think if we make this background picture this background color into um let's put this at the back one of these it should work Here, this maybe this color. No, this color will do. But I need to be much, much lighter. It's a terracotta color. And the heading, subheading for this might not work, so I will use this instead. Oh, for subheading, let's go um, italic instead. Yeah, kind of good. Send me, uh, this, this looks good. So it kind of go together with this, but still, we have it um, looks slightly different from the top. And still got the Moroccan feel. That's more important. That's the most important what we want to have. Let's have this in the same style. Semi bowl. Yep. Let's move this. Okay. Let's not leave this white. Let's reverse this part. So have a darker shade of background with this color instead. A sage green. But have this set in reverse color. Let's see if this color works. Yep. And lastly, let's go and dig some social media icons and put it in, which I already have it somewhere. All right, so I already have it done somewhere, so I'm simply just going to paste it in here and replace this tree, just delete away this, and have this done over. And it shouldn't be so big, it should be slightly smaller. And have this done group first so that I can change the color. And this should be in my color instead, which is this color. So this is how we put together a high fidelity wireframe from the low fidelity wireframe previously. It kind of look almost like the final website, how it's supposed to look like, except that it's not pixel perfect. You see that when I increase this size, I simply eyeball it. I didn't really measure how tall it is supposed to be and stuff like that. So, but the actual one, you probably have to measure it and maybe it will be even bigger or even smaller. So take note of that. But this is high fidelity wireframe, it's meant for approval and easy fix. When the stakeholder or the client review this and then they give, give us some feedback or the team give us some feedback, we can quickly edit and change further before we go into the full scale production, which will be done either in Photoshop, um, the old way or um, XD. So this can be done in XD as well, by the way, for the low fidelity wireframe and high fidelity wireframe. So just that I want to show you how to use these two things, low fidelity wireframe and the mood board to create this high fidelity wireframe. So hope you enjoy this lesson. And if you like my video, please click like and subscribe to Uncle Teach You. And your support is actually the main motivation that I carry on and do all this. Thank you and see you in the next video.